Hey everybody, Daryl from Anglers All. L Dub and I are down in the fly tying den again. Today, it's the Clouser Minnow. In 1987, Bob Clouser brought this to our attention and it's been a standard in all of our fly boxes ever since. Lots of variations, lots of ways to approach this. I'm gonna keep it straightforward, svelte, clean, neat, with one little twist. All right, we're gonna get started here. I've got an Umqua X-Series 420 flats in a size two in the vise. And we're gonna tie on uh, some lead eyes here in small. I'm gonna get started with some 140 UTC. The reason I am using one T uh, UTC uh, is because it is a nylon thread and nylon gives me some stretch. And I do like stretch when I tie on my lead eyes. Uh, it really kind of allows me to get a little more cinching power. So I started my thread about an eye length back and I'm simply dressing a specific area of where I'm gonna be tying my eyes in, basically, preparing the hook shank to be able to hold on to these eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a series of X wraps. And where I place my eyes on my clouser is important. I'm gonna do a couple of X wraps. We're just gonna park it right there and kind of take a look at where I am. If you see the position of my uh, eyes here to the hook point, I'm about, oh, I'm gonna say two hook eyes back from the hook point. The further back you go on the shank, the more your fly will glide or drop in, and the more forward you go, it's gonna jig and just drop straight down. We're looking for a balance in there. We don't want it to do more of one or the other. That nice glide allows you to still jig the fly on the strip, and then if you wanna rest, instead of it just diving down, it'll slide down for you. I'm gonna go three to five on each side. I usually do four or five is where it stops. Support, inline cinch. Over the shank and under the eyes, we're familiar with that move. Do three or four one way and then cinch it and then do three or four the opposite way. And what we're looking to do here is build these X wraps up and then cinch them down with some opposing wraps going over the shank and under the eyes and building these stacks up. And what we're doing is we're really just locking these eyes in. The adhesives I like to use for my dumbbell eyes or my bead chain eyes is a loon water-based cement. And it is like a basically, or it's basically a, uh, a rubber type glue, a latex glue. It has a lot of give to it, a lot of stretch, so if these eyes get bumped around by the big dogs, it's not gonna wanna lock off and spin on you, it's gonna stay locked and not move. And they're straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie off this thread. And we're gonna move on to some nano silk in 50 denier, in brown. What we're gonna do is just do a couple of, of wraps over to kind of get a uniform in color. All right. So when you look at bucktail, you've got a top, a middle, and a bottom. And what we want here is we want bucktail from the middle, top middle to the top, which gives us the least amount of flare. We don't want to have too much flare on this bucktail or these from this bucktail onto the clouser for this specific pattern. And then you also want to make sure that you're going in and grabbing precisely what you want and where you want it from. It's going to be a little hard to see this. I'll show you when it's cut off. I'm going in as close to the, as close to the hide as I can. And the reason being is that when you look at these fibers, these, this group of hairs here, the context of this taper is relative to how long the hair is. So if we cut off a really, really long fiber of bucktail and then we cut it down to what we want to use, the relative taper is now gone because we've cut it in half. So although the taper exists, it's not gonna move as softly or as much because we've cut off half the other taper. So it has to be relative to the size. So the least amount that we trim off of our bucktail, the more we can maximize the movement and suppleness of that bucktail when we tie it in. So instead of tying this in off to the top and rolling it around, go ahead and lock that bad boy in with a 35 or 45 degree angle on the inside of your hook shank, and then grab it with a couple of loose wraps of, of, of thread to where it's now in control. Pull it inside the eye, a couple more wraps to secure it. Make sure it's all on the top shank. Some loose wraps up front, get your wraps a little tighter as you go back to the eye. Don't worry about this. We have plenty of time to wrap over other things to clean this up. 
What's important now is that we don't have a ton of bucktail building up down here. That's our first visual. If we start getting too much bulk down here, it's only exponentially going to get worse as we build out the fly. So once we get that, we're good. We don't need a ton. I'm going to go under my eyes and now grab this bucktail on the other side and then come right down behind the eyes. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to hold this just to the inside of the hook shank, allowing my th thread pressure to go ahead and lay this down on the hook shank. And we want to go just shy of the hook bend. Don't want to run it down the hook bend. I'm going to back that off one and go right there. Now that I know visually where I'm going to have this lay, I can now come under and give it a couple of wraps underneath just to kind of help keep that in place, locked up and pushed. Now, if you find that flare on you, all you have to do is just give it some wraps that aren't really full of pressure and you can bring that down. And then we're gonna push this back, do a quick whip finish, and we're gonna do a quick mod here. And when I say a mod, we're just gonna do a quick little add. I like adding a pop of color to that shank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start some red thread here. I'm gonna capture my nano silk and trim that off. And we're gonna do a red thread base on our body. I'm gonna take one trip down, one trip up. We're still gonna be pretty uh, cognizant of what we're doing as far as uh, building our body up. We don't want a ton of bulk back there. Now we're gonna tie in a little bit of flash and we're gonna do a little flash over a brighter thread color. So I'm gonna go ahead in and twist the flash around and then hang that off. We're gonna tie this in. And this underbody could be anything. It could be a flow orange, it could be a red. So you kind of think of maybe a deep water clouser and maybe add a pop of that to it. So now that I have what I want with my underbody, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap forward on my flash. And I'm gonna go back and forth a couple times. There we go. All right. And then all I'm gonna do is crisscross these. I know a lot of times you'll see the capture and put the thread over the bobbin, and I like to kind of teach a little different trick. Um, because that wrap gets loose and then you, you're having to go back and cinch a loose wrap. Instead of doing your transaction on top of the fly, do it on the bottom. Just go around the block with each of them, send one around the other, and then come up and cinch down, run around each other again, cinch down, and then we're going to cut off our material. And all we're doing there is doing the same thing up top but down on the bottom with more controlled wraps and better technique. We're going to go ahead and whip finish that. And we are out with the back part of that fly. We're going to go back to our 50 denier semper fly and finish the front half with our bucktail and our crystal flash. So that was the small detour. That's all it really was. All right. Clean that up just a tad. And we're going to go onto our crystal flash. You know, when it comes to the Clouser, I'm a, an under flasher, so I do two strands of crystal flash of your choice. I am using brown. The reason I'm using brown is because this particular color scheme works both in salt and in fresh water. So whether it's shrimpy or whether you're working trout or even warm water bass with a sculpin pattern, tan or brown and white, I know, I know chartreuse gets its fair vote, but I do like the more muted colors. So we're gonna go with tan. And again, I'm gonna be looking for little, little flare here. So I'm gonna be picking from the, the middle to the upper part of, of this bucktail here for my wing. Uh, you're gonna find the longest, usually right there in, the, in, the, in that lower, lower top to upper middle section, right in here, you'll find your, your longest fibers getting shorter down at the bottom, but also with more air and flare at the bottom. So I'm gonna go just close to the top here. I'm gonna pick something off right about in this zone right there. 
I know that I'm gonna be tying this in just behind my eyes here, so I'm just gonna kinda of get a, a lay down. Let's see how nice that lays right just past the, the belly. We're gonna get a nice proportion, nice shape and silhouette there. I'm not gonna do anything other than kinda of grab this right there and pull out my under. I'll keep everything else up lengthwise in that middle to mid-length, cut nice even. And do the same thing that I did in the white. We're gonna start this on the inside 45 of my hook eye and let the thread pressure roll that back over onto the top. If it seems to be a little long, pull it back in. We don't wanna crowd the eye. So you can see like how clean we are, right? Like this is, this is one thing that we really wanna kinda of have is, is, is really clean, durable, productive flies. We don't have a lot of bulk here. We're balanced with our eye back and we're in complete control of what we have going on up front. So you can see on the other side here, nice and clean with our, with our flash. If you really wanted to make this daily durable, if you're kind of in toothy crater land, you can hit that with a little bit of UV resin. Don't build the body up. I would suggest something thin uh, and then uh, like accelerate thin dry or something on the flow side to where it's just gonna be a coating and then you're out. Flash underneath and then two colors. All I'm gonna do is clean up and get a little solid color on my, my head here and then I'm gonna whip and be out. Because I'm using 50 denier thread, I'm afforded some extra wraps because I don't have a lot of bulk building up. If I were on the 140, there's not a chance that I'd be able to have the liberties I've taken to clean this up and keep it as clean as we've had it. So there you go, the tried and true Clouser. Thank you, Bob. We wouldn't be catching fish without it for as many years as we have, brother. So buy them up or tie them up. Clouser minnow.